Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks very much. Um, so, uh, my name is Ian Bennett. Um, I am a Master of Applied Science candidate at the University of Toronto Space Flight Lab. Uh, and today, I'm going to be talking about uh, nano satellite aircraft tracking, the simulation and design of the Canix 7 ADSB receiver. <coughs> So just a quick summary of what I'm going to be going over. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about current aircraft tracking methods, including ground-based uh, ADSB, uh, as well as uh, then moving into uh, space-based ADSB and the Canix 7 mission, uh, including our ADSB receiver payload design, uh, the receiver antenna design, as well as uh, some simulations of our ground coverage. What we expect to get. Uh, so SFL. Oops. Over here. Um, so SFL has for a while been uh, part of the uh, ship tracking, um, uh, been involved in ship tracking, uh, starting with NTS, or uh, Nano Satellite Tracking of Ships, in 2008, uh, which moved on to uh, uh, AISAT, the AISAT constellation, um, of which two satellites are currently in space, one is currently in production, uh, EV-9, uh, NORSAT-1, and NORSAT-2, which is carrying a uh, a new uh, VHF data relay as well as uh, an AIS receiver. So from ship tracking, um, one of the next logical steps you can take is to move into aircraft tracking. Um, so aircraft tracking is important for uh, several reasons. Um, the main one is that we want to uh, maintain proper space in between different aircraft uh, flying similar routes uh, and prevent collisions and things like that. So by improving the uh, quality of your aircraft tracking, what we can do is space these aircraft closer together. We can have more aircraft flying on uh, similar routes, uh, leading to uh, fuel savings for uh, airline, uh, for airline uh, aircraft operators. Uh, there are a couple of different types of uh, aircraft tracking that we use nowadays. Um, there's primary and secondary radar. Uh, so primary radar is traditional radar in the sense that bounce a radio signal off of an aircraft and you get a position from that. Secondary radar is kind of used in conjunction with that where we're looking at, uh, where we're sending an interrogation to the aircraft, uh, getting some information back from the transponder, as well as just sort of uh, normal voice communication between pilots and uh, ground control. So ADS-B, or Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, is kind of the next generation of aircraft tracking. Um, so what ADSB does is rather than uh, relying on a ground station to determine where the aircraft is, um, it uses a uh, the aircraft's own internal GPS system to determine its position, and then the aircraft will automatically send out uh, updates on its position, flight status, altitude, uh, speed, and heading, uh, which then can then be received by other aircraft and by ADSB ground stations. Uh, and the ground stations that transfer this information to air traffic controllers um, and allow it to operate. Um, there are, however, some limitations to this. Um, so this map here uh, is uh, basically a coverage map of where we currently have uh, both traditional and ADS-B uh, ground coverage of uh, aircraft. So as you can see uh, from this map, there's a, a lot of areas uh, not in yellow. Um, these are areas that are not covered. Um, particularly over oceans uh, and remote areas such as northern Canada, um, China, and uh, Russia. Um, of particular interest is uh, this route, in, uh, and particular interest to Canix 7, the Canix 7 mission, is the North Atlantic. Um, so here, there is a significant gap uh, where aircraft, there were lots of aircraft flying from Europe to uh, North America. Um, there, is a, there are a few optimal routes based on which city you're leaving from and going to. Uh, but because of the lack of aircraft tracking, uh, or live aircraft tracking, um, there's a significant spacing uh, because we have lots of aircraft flying. We need significant space between them to reduce the risk of collision. Um, so this means that a number of aircraft are flying non-optimal routes, meaning lots of more fuel is being burned than, than you would traditionally, or than you would like. Um, so this brings me to space-based ADSB. So space-based ADSB uh, on the aircraft side is exactly the same as ground-based ADSB. Um, the only the main difference is that we're looking at um, receiving the signals rather from a ground station. We're using a spacecraft uh, in orbit to do the receiving and then transmit uh, the information back down to a ground station. Oops. 
Um, and so that brings me to uh, CANX-7. So the CANX-7 spacecraft is a student-driven technology demonstration satellite, which is currently uh, under construction at uh, Space Flight Lab right now. Um, its primary mission is to demonstrate a drag sail payload. So it's uh, for the purpose of deorbiting uh, small uh, microsatellites and nanosatellites, which typically uh, don't have enough space for uh, more traditional uh, deorbit methods. Uh, however, spending all this time and effort to get the spacecraft in space, just to bring it back down again, um, we, we wanted to include a secondary payload as well. So we've included a, an ADS-B receiver um, to sort of test out receiving these signals from space uh, on a small scale. Um, so here you can see the ADS-B payload. Uh, on the left, we have the flight integrated uh, module with its uh, antenna and housing. Uh, and on the right, you can kind of see a, a more broken down version. Um, so we basically have a, a custom built uh, antenna, which I'll go into a little bit more later, um, where we are uh, circularly polarized uh, patch antenna, which is used to receive the signals. We have a low noise preamplifier to um, effectively reduce the noise temperature of the system, as well as a uh, commercial off the shelf uh, receiver and payload computer. And these, using commercial off-the-shelf products, allows us to have a quicker development cycle as well as um, reduce some of the risk because these kind of things have been operating for a while. So uh, the CANX-7 mission profile. Um, so CANX-7 uses uh, two-axis magnetic attitude control. So what this means is we, we don't have precise pointing on the spacecraft. This is um, done as a, a cost and risk reduction method um, for the primary payload. Um, but it means that our antenna bore site is always going to be pointed uh, parallel to uh, the Earth's magnetic field lines. Um, so uh, what this means is that uh, the recordings that we're going to be taking uh, on our technology demonstration satellite are uh, limited to regions of medium and high latitudes. So uh, essentially kind of 30 degrees and above. Um, this isn't uh, as big of a disadvantage as you might think, as mostly what we're going to be looking at is, uh, or what we're primarily interested in, is these kind of North Atlantic um, areas where we're uh, going to be measuring uh, or recording uh, passage of aircraft through there. Um, so because of this um, somewhat uh, uh, slightly imprecise uh, method of attitude control, um, we have to build sort of um, a little bit of uh, extra margin into, into our antennas. Um, so ADS-B is a vertically polarized uh, signal uh, when it's transmitted from the aircraft. Um, so what we've done in order to uh, mitigate any of the risk from potentially the satellite uh, spinning slightly or, or uh, you know, being off axis a little bit uh, is we've done designed a circularly polarized antenna. Uh, so this basically uh, reduces the risk of the antenna being, uh, say, pointed in the wrong direction and us not being able to receive anything from the aircraft at all. Uh, it also helps mitigate some of the risk due to um, Faraday rotation due to the uh, ADS-B signal passing through the ionosphere. Um, so on the left here, you can see uh, our simulated model of the antenna. Um, so this is just done in HFSS. Uh, it's, uh, we, we get about 4.3 dB uh, peak circularly polarized gain out of the antenna um, with about a 45 degree uh, beam width. And on the right, you can see uh, we've actually built the uh, antenna, placed it on a uh, replica of the spacecraft, and performed the antenna testing. Um, and from this, you can see this is a, this graph on the right here is a, um, a gain pattern of the antenna. So it's very similar to what we're seeing in the simulation. Uh, we know our simulation is good. Um, and it's, it's actually slightly uh, better. So we, we get a little bit extra gain uh, at bore site and a little bit wider of a beam of a 3D beam. So finally, um, what we do, what we've done with this um, antenna pattern that we've gotten is we, we wanted to uh, look at um, you know, what we're expecting to see on orbit. Uh, and the kind of coverage that we would be expecting to get with this antenna based on um, you know, the characteristics that we've measured. Uh, so this here is a simulated ground coverage map. Um, as you can see, we have quite, uh, sorry, this is from uh, 40 degrees north uh, using the uh, estimated attitude of the spacecraft at that position at a 650 kilometer altitude. Um, so the spacecraft is going to be operating um, 
potentially depending on the launch, uh, between 400 and 800 kilometers. Uh, so 400 kilometers, we get a little bit uh, better uh, decoding, a little bit higher decoding percentage, a little bit uh, wider of an area, and 800 kilometers would be a little bit smaller. Um, but relatively, uh, at the average, around 650, uh, we see a pretty good performance uh, on uh, all counts, with a peak uh, of around 70% um, and, and large and small average. So uh, in conclusion, um, space-based ADSB is going to allow us to track aircraft in, reason, in regions where it was previously infeasible. Um, so we're going to be able to track aircraft over uh, oceanic and remote areas, uh, and those routes will be optimized uh, with uh, smaller spacing between aircraft. Uh, Canix 7 is going to be among the first nano satellites to track aircraft from space using ADSB, uh, and the use of commercial off-the-shelf technology allows us for, to, to have fast and inexpensive development. Simulations of our uh, final product show promising results with large coverage area and high peak decoding percentage, um, and we will of course be confirming these uh, measurements, or sorry, we'll be confirming these simulations uh, with measurements we take uh, while the satellite is on. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank our partners, ComDev and NAMCAT, NAV Canada, uh, for their funding of this mission, as well as uh, RMC and Planning Vision for assisting in development. Thanks very much. So we may have time just for uh, one quick uh, question there for Ian. Anybody in the room at all? What are you launching? Um, we don't know uh, right now. I think we're targeting uh, end of this year uh, for launch, um, but we don't have a confirmed date yet.